All right, let me hear a big round of applause for Oblis. Hello. Uh, let me do a quick check of the excellent. Okay. Um, so. My name is David Vork. I'm with the company Obelisk. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about mining your own blocks. Um, so this is specifically targeting uh, the mining protocols used by mining farms and mining pools. Um, and and what well, we should be thinking about this. Um, so a little bit of background on me. Uh, I am the lead developer at Saya, which is a decentralized cloud storage platform. Uh, it's one of the uh, premier altcoins in the space. Um, and then I'm also the founder of Obelisk, which is a ASIC manufacturing company. Um, so one of the one of the passions of mine is mining, uh, both from the you know hardware and technology side, but also from the protocol and game theory side. Um, so today I want to address uh, mining pool centralization, um, and so something that. Uh, a big challenge facing Bitcoin, and then to an even you know greater extent facing all of the altcoins in the cryptocurrency industry is mining pool centralization. Um, there are a small number of mining pools. Generally speaking, they have a great amount of control over which blocks get mined. So if you wanted to engage in an activity like censorship on the Bitcoin network, um, really, like you, you may only have to go and find a bunch of mining pools. You know, a couple of mining pools. Um, and, and convince them to engage in certain activities. So I, you know, I view mining pools as a big uh, weak point for decentralization um, on the network. So most hardware today uh, uses a stratum protocol, which is a protocol that explicitly gives the mining pool the decision over what gets mined. Um, and, and we've historically seen abuses. Um, I think uh, one, of the, one of the big examples is back from 2000. 13, I want to say, uh, ghash.io was performing um, block discarding attacks against Satoshi Dice um, to kind of weight probabilities in their favor. And it, effectively, uh, ghash.io was using their enormous amount of hash rate to steal money from uh, Satoshi Dice. So we do know that, that occasionally pools will cross the line um, and, and act maliciously. Um, so typically, we've, we've responded to this. For example, when, when it was discovered that ghash.io was abusing their hash rate, um, essentially, all the miners moved to other pools. ghash.io does not exist today, or if they do, they're very tiny. It was something like, it took like one month uh, for ghash.io to go from like 40 or 50% of the hash rate all the way down to 2% um, once they were discovered being malicious. So, um, but. This is a reactive strategy instead of a proactive strategy. I mean, like we, you know, ghash.io was able to do an attack, and then the community had to react to the attack instead of uh, a better situation, which would be if the attack just wasn't possible in the first place. Um, and then, if you're going to use a reactive strategy, which is kind of what we're stuck with today, that requires that a good pool exists, which you can switch to. Um, if, if you end up in a situation, and this, this maybe isn't likely on Bitcoin, but if we go to like say Litecoin or Dogecoin, you may end up in a situation where every pool is malicious or there, you know, there's, there's one dominant pool and you don't have good options to switch away from if that pool starts acting poorly. Um, and so then, then it's a whole other thing to like spin up a pool. Um, so for, for both these reasons, I really don't like the reactive strategy and I don't think it's a good long-term strategy. Um, so as a mining farm, you want to care about this because uh, the cryptocurrency users and the cryptocurrency developers will react to hash rate based attacks. Um, if the hash rate is malicious, one of the first things that developers can reach for is a hard fork. They can change the proof of work algorithm. Um, now, if the mining pool is the one that's acting maliciously and you change the proof of work algorithm, it's the mining farm owners uh, who are, you know, technically innocent um, or, you know, at best complicit, they're the ones who get hit with the majority of the punishment. And so it's, it's a heavy-handed solution, but if everyone's doing stratum mining, that's really, like, that is the best, best way for the attackers or for the cryptocurrency developers to deal with the problem. So as a mining farm, you should see strat stratum mining 
or mining, which gives the mining pool the ability to choose what blocks are being mined, you should see that as a liability. Um, they're kind of acting on your behalf and risking your hardware if they start making decisions that the network decides it doesn't like. Um, the other thing that can happen, if, even if the devs don't respond, um, if a cryptocurrency is being attacked or if the hash rate's being misused, uh, people will just leave that cryptocurrency for other cryptocurrencies. Um, so the core purpose of mining pools is not to pick blocks. The core purpose of mining pools is to reduce variance. Uh, so if, you, if you're a mining farm and you're mining one block you know, every few days or every few weeks, uh, that may not be a consistent enough payout for you to you know, make rent or, or pay for your electricity bills. You go to a mining pool so that you're getting paid on a daily or hourly basis and you have a steady, consistent income that you can run a business with. Um, so we want to switch away from a protocol that gives the mining pool both, both lets them act as a, like a steady stream of income and also lets them pick the blocks to a protocol where um, all they are doing is acting as a steady stream of income. The mining pool is not picking the blocks. Um, and so basically the main thrust is that uh, we want to, as the industry continues to evolve, we want to drop stratum. Um, we want to be moving away from stratum. Um, and so, and I'll quickly, this isn't in the slide deck, but I know that there's an effort right now to redo the stratum protocol. Uh, there's like a stratum two effort. But this has the same like critical weakness, which is that the stratum two still allows the mining pool to decide what blocks uh, people are mining. So Matt Corallo, a Bitcoin core developer, has come up with a protocol called BetterHash um, that takes a look at all the mining protocols that have been come up with. It, it, you know, from an engineering perspective, it makes sense. To the, to the mining farm, it makes sense. To the mining pool, it makes sense. It's this really cleaned up protocol that also allows the miners and the mining farms to pick the block. Um, so ba basically, this talk is a big pitch that uh, you should push for your mining pools to implement better hash. You should get rid of the liability that mining pools are. You should improve decentralization by making it so that instead of the mining pool deciding what the blocks are, the mining farms are deciding the, what the blocks are. And I think that this, this creates a much healthier ecosystem. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all I had to say today. Mm -hmm.